Team Fortress 2 is by no doubt one of my all-time favorite games. I've been playing this game since 2014, and it was the entire reason why I initially got Steam to begin with. It's very much been a favorite of mine for the longest time, and it still is today. And like many fans out there, there are a few things I absolutely love from the game, such as the world and gameplay, but especially the characters. Team Fortress 2 has so many incredibly well-loved characters that are completely dripping with personality. Even the side characters that are either comic or animation exclusive are more than memorable. To go along with it, I also love the outside parts of the series as well, such as the comics. The comics added a whole lot more to the lore, characters, and humor of the game and world as a whole. One thing though that I'm sure everyone is still waiting for is the seventh and final comic in the TF series line. Back in 2013, Valve began to release comics known as Manco No More. These comics are without a doubt the most talked about ones in the franchise, seeing as they tell a very large yet concise storyline. These are the ones that you are most likely to come across when you search for a Team Fortress 2 comic dub online. The best ones I recommend are by a channel called The Beer. The TF comics were also the center of the recent dubs online that were done by the official actors, along with one update comic. These comics have been a great help with answering many long-awaited questions, including one of the biggest ones being who Scout's father was. But these comics have also raised other questions. What is the goal of the administrator? How will the series end? Will there even be a seventh comic? Or... Who can read? In the second comic, Unhappy Returns, there was a specific line from Miss Pauling that got me wondering. How could mercenaries have done any of this? They don't rezone, they don't petition. Nearly half of them can't read. Nearly half of them can't read. This had me wondering, which mercenaries could not read? Because throughout the entire series, we've seen nearly every single one of them read and or write in some way, shape, or form. But I believe that more or less she was discussing the level of their literacy, how literate they were, and what the capabilities of reading and writing are. So I spent a few hours going through every single Team Fortress comic, official animation, and some in-game material to find out the answer to this question. So everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you find it to be a fun watch and are interested in discovering the answer to this question. Which Team Fortress 2 mercenaries can read? As said, this was not as easy as I initially thought it was, and I had to spend about four hours just doing research, because the easy answer to this would just be to go by their personalities, or to go by who has read the least in official media. However, that wouldn't work, seeing as there are characters we've seen read very little, and yet are still very smart and intelligent characters, like the spy. On the other side of the spectrum, we've seen characters like the mayor of Two Fort writing and reading in the comics on Happy Returns and A Cold Day in Hell, though we already know he isn't the brightest bulb. So the evidence I'm going by is based entirely on what we've seen characters read, how much we've seen them read, what we've seen characters write, how much we've seen them write, general outside sources based on statements or visuals, arguable statements, and just general knowledge. Arguable statements would include statements that are likely to have evidence behind them, though the evidence does have a possibility of being refuted, being either minimal or shaky. General knowledge just means the obvious, obvious reasons or obvious inferences that can be made and unlikely to be refuted. To explain clearly before I go into the next segment, I'm going to list off each of the main characters, list off the evidence associated with them, and explain said evidence. Some characters have more evidence than others. I will be excluding side characters though, like Saxton Hale or Merasmus, so I'm only going to be focusing on the main nine mercenaries. But for those who are wondering about some side characters, I'll briefly answer that at the end of the video. Let's go in class order, starting with German 985, also known as The Scout. The Scout has been seen reading on multiple occasions. The most blatant of these would be included in an expiration date and unhappy returns. First, when they all believe that they're going to die within a three-day time span, spies everyone write their final wishes and put them into a bucket. Oh, dear God. This is where we see Scout has written his name on multiple of these cards. In this scene, we also recognize that Scout has at least somewhat of a talent for artwork in an animated format. Second, Scout wants to wound Miss Pollen, so he ends up asking Spy for help with that. In these scenes, Spy teaches Scout certain actions he's supposed to perform. During this, Scout is again seen drawing in the same animated style with large bubble letters next to the drawing, this time saying blah blah boom. In this montage, Scout is also seen reading several novels and books, being seen reading three separate ones while surrounded by multiple others, obviously implying the amount he's gone through to an exaggerated extent. A small honorable mention could also go to the fact that he presses the button to warn about the missing intelligence. This could have just been a quick reflex on his part, however if you look at his neck he does turn to face it for a brief moment. The third and final major example comes from Unhappy Returns. In his prison cell, Scout is seen reading a novelized version of Ghost DA. This would already be great, but this single panel makes my life a hell of a lot easier, due to the fact that the novel directly states what reading level is his target audience, saying on the cover that it's meant for young readers. He's as well shown a planned out card in promotion for their execution, likely being able to read this too. 
Those are all the definitive pieces of evidence out of the way. However, as said, there are pieces that are arguable. To keep these short, they all have the same thing in common, the observation that Scout knows what a logo or phrase represents and means. The first comes from a cold day in hell, reading out the logo on the side of a delivery plane for honey and hot dogs, reading out the name Amelia Earhart. The other two are both linked with the same person, Tom Jones. In the comics, Scout has a collection of Tom Jones memorabilia, some with just the logo over it, and in one of the Tough Break Updates postcards, he even puts a sign above it, showing that he has at least some recognition with the written form of the name. In The Naked and the Dead, Scout nearly dies, and has a tattoo of Tom Jones on his chest with the words Sex Bomb, with bomb misspelled. From the prior evidence, he likely does know what this means. However, there is a history of people getting tattoos that obviously don't mean what they claim. Like people getting a Korean tattoo they think means peace to all men, and in reality means Resident Evil 6 isn't that bad. The only other honorable mention I can give here is an actual in-game example, the Home Runner's Hobby Taunt. This is a short example because it just has Scout do a taunt by sitting down on a beanbag or reading a comic book. That's it, just him reading a comic. In conclusion, Jeremy Albertson, better known as the Scout, is moderately literate for someone roughly at a preteen level. So Scout isn't illiterate per se, but for an adult man who is roughly 27 around the time of Man vs. Machine, and most likely older at the time of the TF series comics, he should have a higher literacy skill than that. This definitely places Scout as the youngest at a sub-moderate literate state, and the first one that we can definitively say how literate he is. He can read, but it seems to only be to a certain extent. He can write and does a fairly nice calligraphy, just needs to practice on his actual writing skills. With Scout out of the way, let's move on to attempted World War II veteran and communist bashing patriot, Jane Doe, better known as The Soldier. Soldier is by far the most perceptively stupid character in the series. Not that he's not enjoyable, he very much is, having a great damage output and a great joking style to play as known as the Trollger. However, intelligence-wise, he rivals most politicians for how mushy their brain can become. Soldier lore-wise, however, has become a very ranged character that was the center of many comic lines, and is a major player in the TF comics, giving us much more to play around with. To be upfront, Soldier is actually more literate than I had expected. By that, I mean he's actually been seen reading and writing on a minimal level. We've seen him officially reading twice. In Grave Matters, he reads the will of Zephaniah Mann, reading the section that directly refers to the requirement of one of their passings. Prior, the Mann brothers don't tell him this, so this implies he's reading it directly. The other one is again from A Cold Day in Hell, where the soldier reads the names of the crates full of honey. Though from the camera angle, it could be argued that the crates are open, and he's just seeing what he sees. There are a few examples of Soldier writing, one coming from Expiration Date, with Soldier having written his name on his final wish card. Another example coming from Meet the Director, where Soldier had written on large pieces of paper, These are my heads, do not take my heads. In War on Soldier's Door, there are a few pieces of paper with more writing, one saying Mr. Jane Doe. At first glance, I would have just assumed that that was someone like his landlord or someone writing that on his door. But right underneath it, there's another piece of paper that says, No solicitors. Do not test me. That second one is clearly written from Soldier's perspective. That's really all there is to the definitive examples of him writing. The only arguable piece that I could find of him writing comes from Gargoyles and Gravel, where Soldier plays a D&D style game with a piece of paper and a pencil in front of him. Soldier is a very distinct class where the arguable examples of him reading heavily outweigh the definitive examples. There are actually a bunch of them. In war, he's seen in his home with several books and magazines, and he wears shirts with printed lettering, one of them saying, Gravel Pits of America Scenic Bus Tour. In Doom Mates, he acknowledges that he has been taking Morazos as heart medication, implying that he can read the labels. And in A Cold Day in Hell, he's seen being able to read small lettering, reading out the S in Sears, but doesn't seem to be able to read out the small lettering on his jacket that states, Made in China. In the same comic, Soldier is shown to know a decent amount about American history, implying that he either just remembers what he was told in school, or he did the research on American history himself. The final arguable piece includes one of the only major animations that shows the possibility of Soldier reading. In Meet the Spy, Soldier is the opener of the animation, starting with him reading along with a statement read aloud from the administrator. That could either be just Soldier listening to what he heard, or he could be reading along with it like an audiobook. Jane Doe, the Soldier, can read but it seems to be to a limited extent. A very limited extent. Scout does seem to have a higher literacy level than Soldier does, but Soldier has been seen reading and writing more, though the phrases he reads and writes are almost always simple and childlike. Soldier can read, but it's no wonder why he was refused by the military for battle when the longest thing we've ever seen him write was a nine-word phrase. 
the pyro. Pyro is definitely the most interesting case here, because he's never been seen definitively writing, though the engineer implies in the comic true meaning that they have before. The only time she's been seen reading is incredibly debatable. In Ring of Fire, Pyro is seen reading from a newspaper. This could be a definitive answer to this, but there's one thing some people might be forgetting. As most TF2 fans know, Pyro doesn't see the world as everyone else does. He sees it as a magical candy land. This apparently changes how she sees writing as well. When we shift over to Pyro's perspective, the paper is completely blank on both the front and the back. In that same scene, it's debatable if he even really understands language. In the same scene when people speak to him, she hears him in a completely muffled manner. There's only one other time so far when we see what he hears from her perspective. In the comic A Cold Day in Hell, where he hears a cartoony version of a bear tell her in a clear way that fire is bad. He then murders the bear. I see overall there's really only one other debatable piece of evidence, and that being in the game. When playing Pyro, you can hear a character speak clearly and fine, and even hear Miss Pauline clearly when she gives you contracts. For me, this only confirms that Pyro's mask isn't causing any muffling as I thought it might be. This for me shows directly that she somewhat tunes out or doesn't understand when others talk directly to him, possibly just selectively tuning in or out words and phrases being directly able to understand phrases his mind creates, such as the bear speaking to her. I'd assume most likely why Pyro can hear things perfectly fine in game is to not create a disconnect for those playing the game and who want to have a fun time. However, I believe from this very arguable evidence, that could contribute to Pyro's lack of reading skills. It seems that Pyro has more childlike literacy, even more childlike than Scout. In the game, Miss Pauline even talks to Pyro as if he were a child, using simple convincing phrases towards him. So far, all the canonical evidence we've been presented, Pyro has the worst literacy of the bunch. Never been seen writing, the only time they've read, the pages are completely blank, and it seems as if Pyro can barely, if not rarely, understand people who speak directly to him, as if they were a toddler. Pyro's literacy seems to be that of, if not less, than grade school. Tavish Finnegan and DeGroot, the Demo Man, is probably the closest to an in-between for Pyro and Soldier. Similar to a few characters, Demo Man has only had two definitive examples of him reading. One of these comes again from Ring of Fire, where he actually does something that Pyro wasn't able to do, and reads a newspaper at the end of the comic, reading the cover showing Spy and Scout set for execution. The other example comes from the Bominomicon comic, the only one where we see a child version of Mercenary as the main character. In the comic, Demo Man is told by Merasmus not to read it, to which he then tries to open it, peeking in, causing his eye to become possessed and him to gain his eye patch. This shows that he was curious of what was in it, and to read what it held. I don't think someone who couldn't read would try to open a book and then just say, let's see what we got here. Two of the arguable examples come again from Ring of Fire, and are actually in the same scene. Dumb Man is seen wearing a shirt with printed lettering saying Badland Brawlers, the team previously mentioned in the War comic. Just afterward, Miss Pauling shows up and shows him a piece of paper that states, Assemble the Team. Miss Pauling doesn't say the sentence out loud, implying Dumb Man has read the piece of paper himself while they were discussing. The third example is the same as one of Soldier's examples. In war, Dumb Man is seen wearing another shirt with plinted lettering, again saying Gravel Pits of America Scenic Bus Tour. Unlike Soldier though, on the same page, he wears a foam finger that says the name of a team, Badland Brawlers, as mentioned before. A fourth example is actually where he needed help reading something. Still in war, Dumb Man is given the Islander, being set in a crate that clearly shows its name. Though even when looking at the crate directly, he still asks, What's your name, you dirty girl, in his words. To which Miss Pauling says the name of the weapon. Travis Phineas the Groot, the Demo Man, can technically read, but clearly can't read longer or complicated words. I attribute this to his alcoholism, possibly deteriorating his vocal and physical ability to read or even function. We've seen how alcohol affects him canonically in Old Wounds, where we see how far his reliance on alcohol truly sets in, to which he literally cannot function without it. He's actually going below Soldier in his literacy, a place no human being should be. And before you say Pyro is already there, we're not sure if that thing even is human. The Heavy Heavy is pretty similar to Pyro, being that he's a pretty unique case here. We've seen him read short sentences here and there, such as in Happy Returns where he reads a note that was sent to him by Miss Pauling. How have we seen many characters do that? On the other hand, we have very arguable evidence, such as inferences on what he would know or what he keeps track of. 
In the Showdown comic, we can see him acknowledging the names of his weapons. In Meet the Sandwich, we see a list of ingredients and instructions, most likely implying Heavy knows how to follow these. And in Meet the Heavy, he knows the finances of all of his weaponry. He weighs 150 kilograms and fires $200 custom tool cartridges at 10,000 rounds per minute. It costs $400,000 to fire this weapon. However, for some diehard fans out there, you will know one piece of media that I am forgetting. And it's because this is very debatable. However, I'm going to include it, due to how it is presented. There was a game known as Poker Night at the Inventory. It's no longer on Steam, but you can still get it on G2A for a very hefty fee. It allowed players of games involved in the crossover, particularly TF2, to unlock exclusive in-game items. That also go for a very hefty fee. This game has us talk about a lot of different characters and their backstory. Heavy does make references to things that wouldn't make any sense in the world of Team Fortress 2, such as acknowledging Rocky IV, which came out in 1985. However, he does acknowledge different things that do make sense within the context of his character. Some of the stuff in the fanbase has even been considered canon. And the reason I bring it up is because there was one line that truly sticks out to me. Went to Soviet College of Mines, Farms, and Science. I have PhD in Russian literature. Heavy actually acknowledges that he has a PhD in Russian literature. This already confirms he definitely has a higher sense of literacy than the other characters. From what I've been able to find, to get a PhD in literature in general takes six years. When asked about it, he even confirms that he uses it in his line of work, possibly relating to the finance aspect as I mentioned before. Do you use that in your line of work? More than you think. To me, this already proves that Heavy is a very literate character, though the fan base likes to betray him otherwise. This would automatically put him pretty damn up high when ranked with the others. Along with that, Heavy is also one of the three characters that know separate languages. Learning a language takes a really long time. It takes about 480 hours to be fluent in a rough manner. If you were to learn for 5 hours a day, it would take you about 96 days or nearly 14 weeks. English as well is one of the most complicated languages to learn, being very jumbled and confusing for most non-English speakers. Heavy Weapons Guy is a smart man. Yes, a lot of this is directly based on Poker Night, which, though the game isn't canon, that doesn't mean the information can't be. There are a lot of inferences made in this game that I can't see why they wouldn't be canon or at least mentioned. The characters even mention a lot of things that do relate to their universe, characters, or life, so I'm going to count this as proof Heavy can definitely read as well as the fact that he's fluent in English even though being native to Russia, which is not an English-speaking country. I find it very impressive. The Texas Ranger, also known as the Engineer, is probably the most no-duh case on the list. But because I have to fill out this quota, here are the pieces of evidence that I have, and I will go quickly. In the comic The True Meaning, he is seen reading a book to Pyro, and this is a pretty damn thick book. Secondly, in the comic Loose Cannon, again we see him reading, this time reading the plans of his grandfather. Side fact, these two comics are the only two times we have seen the Engineer without his goggles. But the second comic is where I kind of base my main information on. The Engineer is a character that can no doubt read. He is a literal engineer who can read these amazing plans. As we've established, not all of them were made by him. In fact, most of them were directly based on the work of his grandfather. He is literate enough to understand the scribbles that when describing them as complicated would be an understatement. As well as another fact most diehard TF2 fans will know, the Engineer has 11 hard science PhDs. A PhD like that can take about 8 years to achieve, and he has 11 of them. The Engineer was without a doubt not part of the half that Miss Pauling had mentioned. The Medic is an absolute psychopath. However, he has acknowledged before that he did have a medical license, implying that he did have some sort of medical education. Med school can go up to eight years, though he himself has confirmed that his license was revoked. When the patient woke up, his skeleton was missing, and the doctor was never heard from again! <laughs> anyway, that's how I lost my medical license. We as well do have official evidence of him reading before, such as him writing a contract with the devil and the naked and the dead, and him having clipboards of all of his own information, presumably written by him in a cold day in hell. In Meet the Medic, we establish that his work was developed by him, and even in the scrapped version of Meet the Medic, we do see that he did create the Medigun. All of his work actually has lettering and printed phrases on it, implying that he was the one who wrote down these phrases and lettering just the same. And to mention it, just like Heavy, he knows another language, knowing German, being native to Germany. 
Though I wouldn't at all put it past him on being such an absolute psychopath that he'd be able to conduct all this work without having the smallest amount of literacy to back it up, from what I've seen, it does look as if he can read, and he does have the literacy that could have earned him the now since revoked license. Mundy, the sniper, is probably another one of the shortest ones here. There isn't really much evidence to persuade to either side, however we have seen him read before. In the very first Team Fortress comic, the insult that made a Jurati master out of Sniper, we see him reading a magazine. We don't know how overly written this was or how eloquently scripted it was, so we can't say how to what effect this symbolizes his reading skill. And in Blood in the Water, the closest evidence we have is that he mentioned he found something that proved his parents weren't his real parents. I interpret this as possibly being a note, and if it is, that would show again that he does read. We just don't know how much. For anyone wondering, I denounced the idea that this object could have been the ship, seeing as Sniper would have no idea that this would have been related to him, and would have only given him other questions apart from his familiar ties. My conclusion is that Sniper can read, but we really can't definitively say how literate he is, seeing as we've never really been given much evidence to balance or heavily weigh the scales. He's dead in the middle. Le Spy is again another very obvious case like the Engineer. We know for a fact that he can read and write, and is more likely one of the more literate characters, seeing as we've seen him do both back to back. Nearly all this information does come from expiration date, along with a couple inferences made from the available information, so there isn't much to go on. In expiration date, we see him reading a book in his personal area. In the same area, we also saw multiple photos of him on the wall in different countries and garb, most likely implying that he knows several languages. We know for a fact that he already knows English and French, being the third Merc to be bilingual. As we've established before, to learn a single language, it takes about 480 hours. Since the spy is very clearly French, we can assume that French is his first language. In the same short, we also see him write as well, writing on a chalkboard with different words such as dinner and demeanor. As well as due to his very versatile vocabulary, it seems that Spy is without a doubt one of the more literate characters in the game, being a well-versed and well-educated gentleman. Every mercenary from what we've seen can read, except for Pyra. However, they all have very different stances on how literate they are, so I will summarize the nine mercs and go from least to most literate right here. The Pyro is definitely the least literate, seeing as we've never seen him actually read or write, and all printed lettering from her perspective has been completely blank apart from in-game. Demoman actually comes in right after Pyro, with his very slurred and off-center perspective of lettering. Following Demoman comes the Soldier, with his very minimal understanding of language, especially a very minimal demonstration of writing. Next comes Scout, who has been shown to have a very limited reading capability, however he's the only one where we can definitively point out where his ability stands, equal to that of a preteen. Following that is a Sniper, however due to how little evidence we know, he's only being placed here because he's probably the most average of the bunch being dead center, as well as the only one in the later group apart from Spy that doesn't have some sort of doctor or PhD, or at least did. Medic follows suit with his prior medical doctorate that he said he no longer has, and due to his very unethical and unnatural stances on how to operate or how to perform procedures, it's more likely that he just doesn't have the proper stance on what he's actually doing. But even to get into a doctorate in the first place, he must have been fairly smart. The spy follows very closely to the medic. While not having any sort of doctorate, is still a very elegant and very fluent man, knowing what to say and when to say it. Heavy is next on the list, and is primarily held above due to his PhD in literature, showing that he had an entire stretch of his life that he spent doing nothing but reading. If we didn't know about this PhD he has, then he'd probably be standing right next to Sniper. And finally, the most literate character in the game, it's the Engineer. We've seen him create these amazing machines, some of these machines so amazingly complicated that they're able to keep somebody alive for decades in the case of the Administrator, as well as having 11 PhDs. That's 10 more than one if you didn't know. Every character can read, except for Pyro, but the first half of this list, including Pyro, Demoman, Soldier, and Scout, have such a limited range that for their age group and their work, they would be considered illiterate. Sniper to Engineer would be on the other half of the list, ranging from average to genius. For those of you if you want to know how they relate to the Team Fortress Classic mercenaries, I would assume the Classic ones have a similar literacy level to that of the Team Fortress 2 mercenaries, though some classes are smarter and dumber than others, the biggest difference being in the Pyro, but don't expect a video on them. And yes, many other characters can read. Saxon Hale, Miss Pauling, the Administrator, Marasmus, many of them can definitely read, though I felt I should keep this list short and fine, as well as to keep it in line with Miss Pauling's statement. I figured I would only talk about the main nine mercenaries to keep it concise. I love Team Fortress 2. 
It is one of my favorite games of all time, be my go-to multiplayer experience for many years besides Dead by Daylight. And I just figured I would do a video discussing one of the very minor aspects from this game and the lore that some people would find pretty funny. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching everyone. This video took me a lot longer than expected, with the script having been written back in June or July, but I figured I'd get it done now. I have many videos currently planned and underway as we speak. Upcoming gameplay videos on RE3 Remake, RE2 Remake, RE2 Classic and Code Veronica, upcoming interviews, as well as upcoming discussion videos like this one or longer reviews. Until we meet again, good evening, good afternoon, and good night.